In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. And also with you. Our brothers and sisters, welcome to this Mass in which we adore God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and proclaim the faith first delivered to the saints, received through the proclamation of the Church in every generation. We share in that great company of the church and let us rejoice in it as we are fed by the same gifts as the first ones the gift of scripture and the gift of the holy sacrament let us pray that we may be found ready by our lord yesterday was the 75th anniversary of the end of the second world war and so with that memory in our minds and hearts, we offer this Mass especially for the peace of the world. The men and women everywhere may be given the grace to have reconciling hearts. 
Yesterday was also the feast of the Assumption, the falling asleep of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And as we give thanks that her destiny was in the heavenly places, so we rejoice that that is our destiny too. And look unto her and all the saints for their prayers and encouragement as we live the common life and seek the things that are above. Now, with all that in mind and no doubt your own needs and concerns and hopes, let us call to mind our failings and ask the Lord for his mercy. Show mercy to us, loving Father, we have sinned against you. Please make us anew in your love and your grace you forgive us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Not on our failings, Lord Jesus, we have sinned against you. Please make us anew by your life and your death. You redeem us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Fill our hearts, Holy Spirit, we have sinned against you. Please make us anew. Forgive us and heal us and save us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always thankfully receive the benefits of his sacrifice and also daily endeavor to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. We ask our prayer through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, let's listen as Havi reads to us from the letter to the Romans. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now I'm speaking to you, Gentiles, in much them as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I glorify my minister in order to make my own people jealous, and thus save some of them, for if they rejection is the reconciliation of the world. What will they receive us be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered a first fruit is holy, then the whole wedge is holy, and if the root is holy, then the branches also are holy. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, a wild olive shoot, were gratified in their place to shed the rich root of the olive tree. Do not bound yourself over the branches. If you don't bound yourself, remember that it's not you that supports the root, but the root that supports you. You will say, branches with broken off so that I might be grafted. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stained only your throne faith. So do not become a prone, but stand in awe. For if God did you speak the natural branches, perhaps he will not spare you. Not then the kindness and the severity of God, severity towards those who hide foreign, but God's kindness towards you provides you continue in his kindness, or towards you also will be cut off. And even towards of Israel, if they do not persist in unbelief, will be great faith in, for God have, has the power of grief then in again. For if you have been cut from one is by nature, a white olive tree, and grief, contrary to nature, Nature a cultivate olive tree. How much more will these nature branches be granted back into the nay olive tree? So that you may not claim to be wiser to you are, brothers and sisters. I want you to understand this mystery. A handling has come upon part of Israel, until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be safe, and it is written, Out of Zion will come delivered, he will banish ungodliness from Jacob, 
and this is my covenant with them when I take away the sins. As I regards the gospel, they are enemies of God. You will save, but also regards election, they are beloved for the sales of their ancestors, for the gift and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because, they, because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient. It's in order that be the mercy shown to you, they to you may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned at least disobedient, so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. 
My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed in that instant. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want you to imagine for a moment uh, the voice of Jesus, uh, the person of Jesus, saying directly to you, how great is your faith? The whole of the story that we have just heard leads up to this extraordinary affirmation. Uh, Matthew uses the word great in the Greek 20 times, I think, in his gospel, but only once does it refer to faith. And this is to a woman who is outside of the house of Israel. More of that in a, in, a, in a moment. It's interesting, in fact, that really the complimenting about the strength of faith in the gospel is reserved for this woman, this Canaanite woman, and for the centurion. Do you remember uh, uh, the centurion's son? So here we have Jesus. He has gone away. He's gone into the area of Tyre and Sidon, which is somewhat north of his usual territory of Galilee and Judea. And maybe he's gone that way because he's just had an altercation with the Pharisees and it's helpful to go uh, uh, to another place. And Matthew, in a not untypical way, says, and look, and look, a Phoenician or a Canaanite woman there, the same thing, comes up to Jesus. She is shouting. It's excitable language. It, it's ongoing. It's not that she shouted once in the original. Uh, it's no doubt, as we understand or will understand, is born of her agitation. Actually, her shouting is born of her love for her daughter who is ill. We, we don't um, uh, uh, know whether the daughter is present in the story or not. This is a woman from the Canaanite nation. Now, I only say that because... I'm always saying tucked into the Old Testament. Here, tucked into the Old Testament is a terrible story about another one called Joshua. Remember the word Jesus comes originally from Yeshua, the one who saves, Joshua. And we know the story of Joshua who fought the battle of Jericho and who led the people after Moses. But there are some terrible stories too. And one of the stories, or more than one story, is of Joshua slaying the people, the Canaanite people, including the children. Now, I want you to see the contrast. Well, perhaps the bravery of the woman, for whom maybe that story of her people's in the back of her mind as she approaches this one who bears the same name with her child. And into this situation, the new Joshua, if I can put it that way, hears the woman say, have mercy on me. How many times, brothers and sisters, have we spoke about in sermons and other situations where that is the cry of God's people? We have uttered it already. She comes to him. She makes no claim of worthiness. She doesn't say that she deserves his attention or even his help. She just cries for his pity. She calls him Lord. And interestingly, she calls him 
son of David. This is sort of strange, really, because she is not uh, uh, of the Jews, and this is a very Jewish title, if I can put it that way, because it has overtones of the Messiah who is to come, who is a descendant of David, who will establish in the rumours of the Messiah a mighty kingdom. Of course, we know that this son of David, this one born of David's line, would reveal kingship in a very different light and win the victory in a very different way. And she tells Jesus, what's wrong? She's not crying for herself, we now know, but for her daughter, who is tormented by a demon. Well, literally, could be translation, wickedly, wickedly demon-possessed. She is pitiable, this girl. Now, we know that there are a variety of physical complaints in New Testament times that were ascribed to demon possession. All we know is that she is in a pitiable state and the woman cries out out of love and shouts. And now contrast her shouting with the strange silence of Jesus. This is unusual in his dealings with people. Sometimes he initiates uh, uh, healings and encounters with people and certainly generally he responds to what they say but here he is strangely silent. And then in Matthew's account, this is also found in Mark, though we don't get this bit in Mark's account. Is, um, the disciples say to Jesus, uh, send her away. She's crying after us. This... Um, could be translated, it is in some, the Jerusalem Bible, give her what she wants. The disciples know Jesus well enough to know they've experienced his healing graces and his generosity of heart. Uh, uh, but here there is a woman outside of the household of faith. Give her what she wants. There's a sort of, uh, if I can put it this way, a for goodness sake about it. She is if nothing else, persistent in her need, persistent in her love. Now again, Jesus does not speak to her, but answers them with words that can almost seem, as the next bit will too, almost jarring to us and in some ways remain something of a mystery to the commentators and to the fathers. He says to the disciples, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is the Lord describing his ministry and purpose. And the Greek can be translated as those who are lost among the house of Israel and the house of Israel that is lost. It could be either. Now just to say, what might this mean? Well, I, I just want to remind you what an unadventurous spirit of travel the Saviour had. He does not go with his healing ministry and mission to Rome. He does not go to Alexandria. He does not go to Athens. He is confined almost to the land of the people of Israel, if I can put it that way, to Galilee and Judea. This foray into Tyre and Sidon is unusual. St. Augustine, when he's re reflecting on Jesus speaking these things, says that what Jesus is referring to is a sequence, that first of all, of course, he comes for the redemption of Israel. He is of Israel. These are the chosen people. And yet they are a representative people. One of the house of Israel, the son of David, who is also the son of man, and will not simply be contained by his... Jewishness, if I can put it that way. And his saving work of the cross is of universal significance and universal availability. But maybe Jesus here is referring to what his earthly ministry is primarily about. And that is, is to the people of Israel. Of course, 
we find in the Old Testament certainly this idea that uh, the Gentiles will find their way to Jerusalem. They stream, it says in the prophet Isaiah, to the Temple Mount in procession, that Israel is the light of the nations, that God will bring the Gentiles to his holy mountain for worship, that the Gentiles approach the Father through Israel. And indeed, the Gentiles will, we, approach our Heavenly Father through one who is a son of David, born of Mary. There is a lovely text in the prophet Zechariah where the peoples of the earth come to, the, uh, come to Jerusalem to seek the Lord of hosts. And, and it sort of speaks a bit of persistence, which is why I like it with this particular Canaanite woman who says, I'm coming in, I, I'm, I'm begging you. As the, it says, uh, in those days, this is the prophet Zechariah, 10 men from the nations of every tongue shall take the robe of a Jew, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. This Canaanite woman knows that God is with her. Jesus is of the chosen people from the house of Israel and will draw together many nations in what Paul calls the great secret of Christ and the secret of the church, that Jew and Gentile will be drawn together in one person and the disciples may say, for goodness sake, deal with her so she can go away. But in the end, they too will share the same church with the Canaanites and so many others. The woman does not respond to what he says to the disciples. She simply kneels in an attitude of deep reverence and says, Lord, help me. And his answer seems perhaps harsh to us as he talks about dogs and tables and food. He goes to a domestic scene. It's not right for the children, the little ones, bread to be given to the dogs and thrown to them. Now the word for dog is not like some outdoor dog or some wild dog, but diminutive of uh, not quite a puppy, but a household dog, that you would not give that which is needful of the children, in this case the children of Israel, uh, to those uh, outside. Now it's very important to, to put away any idea that Jesus refers to the woman as a dog. That's not the intention of the text. Of course, dog was a phrase that was often used to to describe Gentiles, never from the Saviour's lips. In any case, the woman responds to this uh, saying of Jesus, which sort of speaks, if I can put it this way, of priorities. Children first. Uh, William Barclay reflects that uh, when she responds, it's in part because she has seen his face and heard the tone of his voice. Well, that goes with words, does it not? The smile on Jesus' face and the compassion in his eyes rob the words of insult and bitterness, says that wonderful Bible teacher, William Barclay. And so the woman feels, well, maybe through a desperation and persistent character, and also because of the way she sees Jesus, she can say more. She can say, but, but, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. She doesn't argue with him. But even the puppies, the puppies have the crumbs thrown to them from the table. And the word in the Greek is like crumb. And Jesus responds in this beautiful way to her faith. Her request for a crumb. Your faith is great and the daughter is healed. Isn't it a beautiful thought that this Canaanite woman has given to the church 
one of our most well-loved prayers, which has been crafted in a sense from this story by Thomas Cranmer when he put together the first prayer book, though he drew it from threads from other places too. Earlier, Thomas Aquinas speaks something of this and the early liturgy of St. Basil does too. But he gives us a prayer uh, which is embedded in the Anglican tradition and certainly the Book of Common Prayer, how well I remember saying it week by week according to the 1662 prayer book. Many of you all know it. It is the attitude of heart of the woman. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property, your essential being, is to have mercy. Therefore grant, grant us, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. Such is the graciousness of the Lord that we, we know we're not worthy of the crumbs. And yet he feeds us with bread and wine and the gift of his very self. This prayer flows from this extraordinary woman whose persistent tugging of the sleeve of Jesus and her deep faith brings forth a healing. Thanks be to God. Now, brothers and sisters, I invite you to join me in the proclamation of our creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray for the church and for the world. And let us thank God for his great love. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless you for the gift of your Son who offers his healing gift and love to all, to both Jew and Gentile. We thank you for the testimony of Scripture and the discovery of your divine persistence and patience, your firmness and your mercy to be found through its sacred pages. We ask that you will continue to remain faithful to your church, even in the midst of its brokenness and frailty its disunity and its timidity. And we thank you for the evident signs of grace at work among Christians of many traditions and cultures. We pray your blessing on the church in every place, yet especially we pray for the church in this diocese. Strengthen our bishops and those who lead congregations across this great city and beyond. 
Lord, we are not worthy of the crumbs that come from your table, and yet you raise us up and share your son with us so freely in the breaking of the bread. Keep us alive to the mystery we share in, and may the sign of your costly love strengthen us to live a life worthy of our calling. And we pray for those who long to receive the gift of this sacrament, who are unable to do so in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, as so many throughout the world remember the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, we pray that you will give to all a new resolve to be men and women of reconciliation and peace. Give to those in authority to whom is entrusted decisions that lead to war or peace, deep wisdom and understanding, that they may never lose sight of the truth that all are made in your image and all find their life and unity in you, the God and Father of all. We pray for our own armed forces, for those engaged in service overseas, and those in the Defence Force who are assisting the management of the COVID pandemic in this state. We dare to pray for a swift end to the necessary constraints laid upon us and for the healing of those who have been struck down by the virus and other sickness and disease. Protect those who are responsible for those who are on the front line of care and encourage those who are downhearted and made anxious by the precarious state of our economy and whose own livelihoods are at risk. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask your blessing, Father, on every heart and home in this neighbourhood and all who have their business in this parish, for schools and places of learning, for those who teach and parents seeking to encourage their children of necessity learning at home, for those involved in local government and those who keep our streets safe, and for essential services going on in the night hours. Even as we long for better days, we thank you for the opportunities for service that the current difficulties offer, and pray for those who gather here every Thursday for our free takeaway lunch, and to, for those in our community making efforts to tutor in these days. Keep us alive and alert to those who are made particularly vulnerable and who find themselves more lonely more isolated and more friendless. Yet we bless you for the evident and impressive resilience and good-heartedness of so many at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust you, those on our parish prayer list. Hear our prayers, O Lord, with the same generous love with which you heard the pleas of the Canaanite woman. Especially we pray for parents who are watching and praying for their children who are ill and for those who care for folk at the other end of life, for all aged care facilities under particular pressure at present, and for families with deep concern for their elderly relatives. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of departed ones, and for the souls of those who have died recently, especially those who have died during the past night. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As your church yesterday kept the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we thank you for our belonging to the great and mysterious company, which is your church, and for her yes to the invitation to bear your son. Keep us alive to the call to be your saints in our own day, that we may lead lives that reveal the presence of her son at work in us and show forth the possibility of a joy-filled and holy life. May the prayers of Mary alive with you in heaven strengthen us, that others may indeed want to tug our sleeves because they know that you are with us, as surely as you were with her. And so now we say together, Hail Mary, Mary full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, the Lord is, is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among, among women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, womb Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, now and at the, the hour of our death. death. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you.
when I shall bow in humble adoration, and then proclaim, my God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, come to Thee. How great Thou art. My soul, my Savior, come to Thee. I pray Thou art, I pray The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. Who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance 
of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Jesus Christ will come again. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heavens. Therefore, we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again. We celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honour be yours almighty Father forever and ever. Let us pray now to the Father in the words given to us by the one who even today makes himself known in the breaking of bread. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, the Word made flesh. Jesus, Son of God, come down on earth. Hear our prayer, have mercy. Hear our prayer, have mercy. Give us your peace. Jesus, King of God, Glory, Prince of Peace, Jesus, Son of Mary, Light of Life, hear our prayer, have mercy, hear our prayer, have mercy, give us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of living God, by the will of the Father and death. By holy body and blood, show me from every evil and all my sin. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Brothers, as, uh, brothers and sisters, as those of us in the church uh, receive the sacrament ourselves, and uh, I invite those who have the reserved sacrament with them at home to receive now too. And then, as is our custom, we shall have the very beautiful prayer for those making a spiritual communion. The body of Christ for the eternal. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body. those of you who are going to make a spiritual communion to pray with me. At your feet, O Jesus, I prostrate myself before you with an unworthy yet contrite heart, humbled yet longing to be in your Eucharistic presence. I love the gift of yourself offered to me in this great and blessed sacrament. Though unable to receive this food for my journey, I desire all the graces that this encounter with you can bring and offer my heart afresh as a place where you might dwell while I wait for the day when I shall again have the joy of sacramental communion. I trust in your desire to abide in me and wish to possess you in spirit. Come. To my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for you. Amen. And now we sing our communion hymn, and uh, during that hymn, brothers and sisters, I shall go to the image of Our Lady of Walsingham and simply honour that image, looking beyond it, of course, beyond the image to the one who lives with her son in the heavenly places and prays for us. Holy Virgin, by God's decree. Eternally, that he could. 
would give his son to our race. Mary, we praise you, hail full of grace. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. By your faith and loving plan to embrace. Mary, we thank you, hail full of praise. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Joy to God you gave and expressed. Son took his place. Mary, we love you. Hail full of praise. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Refuge for your children so weak. Sure protection. All she can seek, problems of life, you help us to pray. Now, Mary, we trust you, hail full of grace. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. To our Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favor, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. We ask our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Just before the blessing, brothers and sisters, may I say uh, again, as I often do, uh, what a joy it is to gather, to be gathered here in the power of the Spirit with the people of God from Christchurch and also with others who... Uh, participate, participate in our worship from various uh, parts of Australia and, and uh, uh, way beyond. Uh, I hope you feel, uh, uh, in a sense, that you are here. That's our prayer, those of us who, who gather together uh, um, to, as it were, present this liturgy. I want to thank the team very much who have uh, shared with me in the offering uh, uh, today. Uh, now, uh, you'll find online, that is on uh, YouTube, if you put in Christchurch Brunswick, and also uh, on our parish website, the first in uh, Deacon Katie's series on 
uh, uh, the book of Exodus and that great journey, that pilgrimage journey that the people of Israel made through the, through the wilderness. Uh, it uh, is worth uh, tuning into, listening to. Uh, next week, um, uh, the liturgy will, as usual now, we look for the day when we won't need to do it this way, but uh, we keep on. Uh, the uh, Mass will be there online at 10 o'clock and uh, on Sunday, and uh, Father Chris Mostert uh, will be the preacher. Now the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now let's go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.